Now that we have the text of Jane Austen's books, let's see what we want to do with it. Okay, so this is what the original data frame looks like after that is if you execute Austin books and you store the results somewhere it's going to look like this exactly what we saw in the previous page now as a prelude to our processing what we would like to do of course is we have already indicated that the unit of analysis for us the token is going to be the individual word so the first thing we're going to have to do is to break up the text into individual words right but we already know that there are there is data for several books that's one thing and also we know that for every book there are many lines right so as the first step what we would like to do is and of course every book contains many chapters right so when we look at a word we would like to know which chapter the word belonged to and which book the word belonged to and later on we'll also want to know which line the word belonged to okay so we want to know all of that so as a first step what we want to do is the following right so of course we are going to break it down into words but before we even get to the line of the uh, to the level of the word what i want to do is for every book i want to have a line number that is for every line i want to add a line number the original data doesn't simply have a line number right so for each book i want to have a line number and for every line i also want to indicate the chapter to which uh, that particular line belongs okay of course we you know the we want the line numbers to be within a particular book which means we'll have let's say the first line of sense and sensibility and you know two three four it goes on and on and on let's say that sense and sensibility has 8000 lines right so line number will go from 1 to 8000 right and of course chapter number will go from initial these are all from before the first chapter here the first chapter begins so you've got one 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 so all of these lines are from chapter one the moment you have chapter two then chapter number would become two and it will continue right once this book sense and sensibility finishes let's say at line 8000 i'm just guessing i don't know the actual line where it is so let's say at line 8000 sense and sensibility finishes the next book starts then line number would come back to one and chapter number would also go back to zero right because you will encounter first the title page of that new book which has no chapter and then of course we'll see chapter one of that book and chapter numbers will start again okay so that's really uh, as a first step that this is what we want to do go from here to here okay so let's see how to accomplish that okay so again as i've said this is the line number in the book that's the chapter number in the book now before we understand exactly how this whole transformation is going to take place it's somewhat involved i want to show you little by little the pieces from which we are going to build this whole process okay so before we jump into the real book i'm going to take a small sample so what i've done is i've extracted some lines from all of jane austen's books from that particular table that we have just been looking at i've extracted some lines and it contains very few lines, about 20, 17 lines, I think. And I've called that as samplebooks.csv. Okay, you have this file, so you can use that. So first of all, this is what it looks like, right? Again, just for illustration, I have extracted only some lines. So I've taken first Sense and Sensibility, the cover page by Jane Austen, 1811. Then I've taken chapter one, I've just taken two lines from chapter one. Then I've taken chapter two, two lines from chapter two. That's it. I've not taken anything else from this book. And again, I've taken the next book. And that book is called Mansfield Park. Notice that the book name has become Mansfield Park. It was written in 1814 by Jane Austen. And I've taken one line from chapter one, another line from chapter two. Okay. Notice that in this book, chapter numbers are, uh, in, Rome, uh, are in, uh, you know, regular Arabic numerals, one, two. Whereas in this book, chapter numbers are in Roman numerals. Okay, so that's going to be a challenge that we'll have to deal with later, right? Now, this is just a small uh, extract from the original book, uh, original file which contained all of Jane Austen's books, right? But this has uh, all the features that we would need in order to uh, look at how we are going to add line numbers to each book and how we are going to add chapter numbers uh, for each line, okay? So this is the book. Now, 
what we are trying to do here is we're going to take this data frame it's called sample as we just saw here it's called sample so we're going to take uh, I'm going to create a new data frame called res and we're taking sample we are grouping by book okay the reason we are doing a group by book is that remember the line numbers we wanted per book that is we wanted line number to start one two three four five and go on up to the end of the first book and once the second book starts we want the line number again to start at one similarly the chapter number we want to start you know uh, for example the it will be initially zero when we come to chapter one here the chapter number will become one then it will stay one 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 when it comes here it will become chapter number two and then it will stay two two and then when it comes here again chapter number goes back to zero okay and then it starts again chapter number zero this is going to be chapter number zero that's chapter one chapter one chapter one chapter two chapter two etc right so this is what we need to do so everything that we need to do in our original data is all those things are already here in this extremely small extract okay so because we want the line numbers and chapter numbers by book that is why we are doing a group by book okay so we have done a group by book and then we are saying mutate line number equals row number right so first we are looking not at chapters we are just looking at adding uh, line numbers where you've got the line numbers for each book starting from one okay so that is why we are having to do a group by if we didn't do a group by then the line number would keep on increasing all the way right which is, so for example if sense and sensibility has uh, you know 8000 lines so it will go from 1 to 8000 and then it will mansfield park will start at 8001 and so on which is not useful we want it to start again from one that is why we said group by book okay and then we are creating a new column called line right and we are creating a new column because we are saying here mutate create a column called line and put the value row number into it right that is the current row number within the group right because we are doing a group by everything we perform is going to happen within the group right so within the group this is row number one two three four five six seven eight nine right and then it's the next group because we are grouping by book this is the next book then row number in that will again start at one two three four etc right so if you did this that's the result you're going to get right again we are still not at the point of breaking down to words right we are going to add the line number we're going to add the chapter number then we'll worry about breaking it into words okay so we've got the line numbers here as we expected it's going up to nine here for sense and sensibility the moment the next book starts the line number again starts at one okay so that's the approach we are going to be using later on in the original data that is all of Jane Austen's books we're going to take that and we're going to use this approach to add the line numbers for every single line in the book okay in not in the book in the file which is for all the books so that is insofar as how line numbers are dealt with now let's see how to deal with chapters okay now before we get into the actual code for dealing with the chapter numbers uh, I'm going to use this function called cumsum or cumulative sum okay so let's understand how that works and once we understand that and we understand some of the details here we can then put it all together and take it back to the original data okay first of all forget any context suppose we have this vector which is a boolean vector right notice that all the elements are either false or true so it's a boolean vector and within this boolean vector I can do a cum sum or a cumulative sum right now if you recall when you try to use boolean values like true and false in an arithmetic context that is you try to perform arithmetic with trues and falses then R automatically treats a false as a zero and a true as a one okay so remember that now when you do cumulative sum then what you're saying is cumulatively sum the elements right so obviously the first element false is zero second is false that is also zero the third is true and therefore the cumulative sum is zero plus zero plus one so the third element is going to be one right so then the, the fourth element the cumulative sum is going to be zero plus zero plus one plus zero that's going to be one 
the fifth element is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1. So that's going to become 2, right? So the result is going to look like this, right? So when you got the first true, it became 1 here. This is false. So this 1 just remains. False is 0. So this 1 just remains. When you come to the second true, you get this 2. And of course, these two are false, so which are 0. So these two are still going to remain 2, 2. When you get the third true, it becomes 3. Okay, so cum sum is nothing but a cumulative sum of all the values in a vector. Okay, and because these elements are booleans, uh, R is going to treat a false as a 0, true as a 1. So the cum sum result looks like this. Okay, now I'm introducing the cum sum function here because we are going to use that in order to calculate the chapter numbers within each book. Okay, of course, uh, in order to find out when we have reached a new chapter, we literally have to scan the book for the occurrence of the word chapter. Okay, we have to do that for the occurrence of the word chapter. Once we know that, we assume that we have found a new chapter. But of course, you know, the word chapter can occur inside the text of the book itself. So for example, there might be a line in the book that says, thus began a new chapter in my life. Okay, which of course is not a chapter in the book. It's just text, right? So not only do we want the line, do we want to look for the line for the word chapter, we also want it to be followed by some number, a digit, right? Like chapter space one, chapter space two, or Roman numerals, chapter space one in Roman numerals, or chapter space five or V in Roman numerals, okay? So we want to look for either of those patterns. Once we see those, we know that a new chapter has begun, okay? So let me put that together just now here. So first issue is to find chapters, right? So for example here, uh, initially we have not found any chapters. So this is all going to be chapter zero. Here we hit the first chapter one. So we're going to say, okay, the first chapter has begun. And then we go on here, chapter two. Okay, the next chapter has begun. Okay, so here we've got a new book. And the new book, which is Mansfield Park, its chapter one has begun here. Its chapter two has begun here and so on. Okay, so what we want to do is to add a column called chapter here and then have zero, 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 one, 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 two, two, two. And then this book, is over, at least the excerpt of it that we have looked at. And now here we come to the new book, chapter 0, 0, uh, 0, chapter 1, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 2, chapter 2. That's what we are trying to do here. Okay, so clearly in order to find chapter, so this is uh, exactly what we've got so far. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to put a column called chapter and we want to put those numbers which are right here. Okay, 0, 1, 2, then 0, 1, 2 in those places. And of course, uh, all of these would follow the previous numbers. The number changes are all that I have indicated, right? So let's see how we can uh, use our understanding of regular expressions and so on to do this. Okay, so in order to, so again, this is our sample, the data frame that we've been looking at. And remember, one of the functions we learned when we did regular expressions was to provide a text and a regular expression and see if the regular expression occurs in that text or not, right? The result of string detect, if you recall, is a Boolean. So it's going to tell us, and look at the regular expression that we used. We are saying the regular expression is, it should begin, right? The line that we are talking about should begin. So that's where the caret comes, begin with a chapter, Right? Of course, we don't want it to be case sensitive. We want it to be case insensitive, insensitive because it might be uppercase C H A P T E R or all chapter, all the words in uppercase. Of course, here they're all in uppercase, but we don't know in some other book later, it might be just C in uppercase and everything else in lowercase. We don't know. Okay, so we've just said, well, ignore case. So don't worry about the case. So the word chapter occurs followed by a space followed by one of these characters. That is either a digit backslash backslash D means a digit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Right? So you've got chapter space, 
chapter followed by space followed by a digit or followed by one of the letters that makes up a Roman numeral I V X L C. Okay, so once you have that, uh, then you know that you've probably hit the beginning of a chapter. Okay, so that that's what it. Of course, we 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 could be much more specific. So, for example, suppose you the word uh, encountered inside the text was thus began a new chapter in my life. So you have the pattern chapter space I, right? So it's going to think that uh, that's really uh, the beginning of a chapter, okay? Which would be wrong, but we are just doing it in a crude way. If we want to be much more specific about that, right? then uh, we have to do, you know, we have to get a little more creative. For right now, we let's assume that this works for us, okay? So what this is going to do is, it's going to return to us, uh, return a Boolean for us, right? So basically what it's saying is, in the first line, there is no occurrence of chapter space something. Second line, third line, no occurrence, right? So that's why false, false, false. Here, indeed, the word chapter, uh, the, the word chapter does occur, followed by an actual digit, right? So that's a true because the pattern matches. Then once again, you've got false, false, which is these two false, and then true, which says, okay, this one matches, this line matches, and so on. This line matches and this line matches. Those are all the trues and falses, okay? So true means the, the regular expression for chapter occurred in a particular line. False means it did not occur in that particular line. Right? So once you have this, you can now do a cum sum of the same thing. Right? So what you're going to get is 0, 0, 0, cumulative sum, just like we saw in the previous slide. So you're going to get a 1, and then 1, 1, 2, and then 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. Okay? So that's what you're seeing here. Okay? Uh, so now, uh, now that we know how to calculate the, so now basically we know what to put in this new column. Okay, so we can use that information to uh, work on our original file. Okay, so putting it all together, what we are going to do is we are saying original books. That is what we are doing is we are using the function Austin books, which is going to give us that crude uh, original file, right? Then we're going to add line numbers and chapter numbers to that book and put the result in a new table called original books, right? So we say Austin books, group by book, mutate line number equals row number, we know this. Chapter is cumulative sum, string detect, uh, etc. right? This is exactly what we had earlier. So we're going to have a new column called line number, which is going to be the row number, line number for a particular book. And we're going to have another column called chapter, which is going to be chapter within that particular book. Of course, we have still not taken the text and broken it down into words. Right now, it's all at the level of individual lines. Okay, But for every line, we have added its line number within the book and its chapter number within the book. That's what we have done. And finally, we are saying ungroup, right? because normally, if you have a group by, and if you don't summarize, then the grouping remains. Okay, So that is why when you say ungroup, it takes out the grouping that was created by group by. Right. So here we did a group by not because we wanted to do any summarization, but simply because we wanted to get the row numbers and chapter numbers, line numbers and chapter numbers within a particular group. Right. So that is the purpose uh, for using group by. Right? Now, 99% of the time when you do a group by, you will probably be summarizing. But this is one example where we are not actually summarizing. Okay, So if you did this, this is a, just a snapshot of what you're going to see. Right, So this is the first line. Its line number is 1, chapter number is 0, and so on. And here begins the first chapter. The 10th line, line number is 10, chapter number is 1, and so on and so on. It goes from here. 